get surely not. Don't make the same mistake as you did last time. You know, you know what you did. Disturbed me whilst I was playing a game. Don't disturb me. Don't talk to me. Don't even look at me. This is a pivotal part. A crucial moment. You will not understand. say don't ask me any questions don't you know it's rude to interrupt people this is game language you do not interrupt people when they're playing games that's a game etiquette you do realize what you have accomplished here today already with your rudeness Well, thanks to you, that game has now been completely ruined because for some reason you have returned back to my retro game store. I am a little bit surprised to see you back so soon. Was there something wrong with the PlayStation controller that I gave you? It didn't work on your PlayStation 4. Well, of course it didn't work. I gave you a PlayStation 3 controller. You needed a controller like this to play on your PlayStation 4. Well, you seemed like you didn't really know what you were doing or talking about, so I assumed that you would want to buy a PlayStation 3 controller. Well, I was hoping that you would notice sooner so you could come back and purchase something else, though I did notice that you didn't come back straight away. What happened? So, really? So you went and purchased another PlayStation controller, but I did not see you in my retro game store. Let me get this straight. You purchased a PlayStation controller in another game shop. sin number two. First of all, you come into my shop after already knowing last time not to interrupt a gamer when he is gaming. So you interrupt me. And the second time, you have betrayed your local game store and purchased a controller from someone else. That is gaming treachery. Didn't you think about your local gamer's feelings before you walked into another game shop? Hmm. Well, I don't feel like I should serve you at all. After your treacherous behavior and your disloyalty to someone who has spent their own time serving you and making sure that he is, is attentive to your every single need. You have betrayed my trust. You have betrayed me. You wish to return something. Well, I hope it's not your 
PlayStation 3 controller. You want to exchange. You want to bring back Battlefront 2. Hmm. No doubt the game was a little bit tricky for you. Hmm. I expect that you turned on the game and you weren't able to level up your character and you did an abysmal job at attempting to get a good score on the leaderboard. Like I said previously, we have a word from people like you in the gaming community. Noob. A noob. 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 A noob means someone who's not only rubbish at gaming, who doesn't understand games, doesn't understand what to do in the levels, and is basically a general nuisance for anyone who is playing with them online, but also someone who betrays their local game stores and purchases gaming hardware from other gaming owners. How unfortunate that you are attempting to deceive me. Well, why is it that you wanted to bring back Battlefront 2? Yes, they do have a loot crate system and star cards upgrade and you found that frustrating too hmm. to continue mm -hmm. so, you understand that EA were being money grabbing thieving creators trying to make you poor pay more for Well, at least you seem to know the subtleties of the Battlefront community. I suppose that does put you up another notch in my level. That puts you at level one. So, yes, I can exchange your Battlefront game, but what would you like me to exchange it with? Of course, my game in store, I have a lot of retro games in here and consoles and things which could be a lot of fun and a lot of interest to you. Well, let me take that battlefront off you there. There it is. A game which was filled with so much potential. But decided to be half a game, not even that, and disappoint fans by introducing a terrible loot crate system, upgrading your players through star cards at random, and what could have turned out, turned out to be one of the best games to succeed its predecessor. Live up to the standards in which a Battlefront game should be made and played. Instead, it turned out to be this Star Wars game full of money grabbing EA executive creator garbage. And you cannot help but be constantly reminded of that when you play this game. So I feel your frustration with the game, this game. I'll be happy to exchange this with something else for you. I have many games in my store which I can talk you through and uh, we can hopefully find something which would make you feel happy uh, when you play a Star Wars game without the looming knowledge knowing that you 
you should be purchasing something or you haven't got the whole game and um, it should have been a masterpiece for Star Wars fans but unfortunately we were deceived we have been decepted so and don't get me wrong the landscapes and the maps are spectacularly beautiful but what's all that without a compelling story and um, gaming so I'm fully aware of your frustration with the game and being frustrated with not being able to play something but this is what happens when you don't remain loyal to your local game stores when they could help you and explain I do have a lot of Star Wars games which could replace the Battlefront and give you the enjoyment in which you seek. But of course, I cannot help but think about how you did not come see me the first time and purchase Battlefront for me where I can have explained the game fully to you before purchasing. the collection here with me and I am happy being the good gracious person that I am. I'm happy to explain them to you and talk through these games. First off, I think, well, just show you something which I think you might be interested in first just so you can really get a grasp on your gaming experience now this is a Nintendo Game Boy and I do have quite a few of these left in stock and they come as a sort of package where it includes games and if you want to go and experience that full uh, sort of retro element, that retro aspect um, in your games and just have some fun with the games without caring too much about graphics and you're just in there for the playability, then this might suit you. So let me just open that up. with these even though they aren't Star Wars games these are of course Pokemon games for the Game Boy and we have Pokemon Red here and we have Pokemon Blue here and these were the first two Pokemon games which came out which were incredibly enjoyable so if you enjoy battling out with other trainers via a cable really want a retro sort of gaming experience then I really feel like that you would enjoy this likewise I have other games as well have Warrior Land which is a very fun game kind of like uh, Mario but just a bit more violent I always thought then we have Mario and um, something else in there WrestleMania, and it's not just the old style Game Boys, which I'm sure that you remember. Let's just pop that up. But
Game Boy, which was kind of the latest sort of Game Boy model. Uh, this is how uh, they sort of turned out to be when they went in color and I started doing it all up a bit more. Um, but this is a great Game Boy and contains some great Game Boy games. It's compact, you can take it around, and it separates itself from phone games as it has buttons with it which are designed for playing games of course. I wouldn't expect someone like you to know that. You would probably just go on your phone to play some terrible games. So with this you would pop your batteries in here, take your game, and in this case it's Star Wars, uh, the new droid army based around Attack of the Clones and again Skywalker. Just pop your sort of disc in there and you're good to go. What's great about this particular Game Boy is that it upgraded itself to have buttons on the sides here. So you can really get extra moves and combat abilities with your character and just generally have an overall better gaming experience and this is what I loved about this Game Boy and it really is a great great little console and very retro now it is old but just as great fun so we have sort of the L button, the R button, left and right, the same that you would have on PlayStation controller, the L's and R's and L2's and ones. So, yeah, it's a, it's a great game, should you wish, uh, gaming console, should you wish to go down that avenue, of course. So let's pop that back. I don't think you are getting uh, any of uh, these ones which I'm showing you. These ones are my ones and are not to be touched. I have completed Pokemon Red and Blue. I have Mew and Mew 2 and all of the real ones. So I would like to see you try and come close to my collection. study all these aspects, not just Battlefront 2 and the new Battlefronts. One must delve in to all the games to understand one of the gaming's great mysteries, to become all powerful in So it happens, and I'm sure you're well aware of, that I myself do enjoy the Star Wars games the most. And this is my collection here. Now these we could play on a different variety of consoles. I'm sure that you have a computer, or at least a laptop. Well, at least you have one. I wouldn't expect you to have a PlayStation 2. You do have a PlayStation 3 controller, mind you, but not a PlayStation 3. Hmm. And then you have your PlayStation 4. Okay, so these games I'm going to show you uh, can be played on different formats and consoles, so I'm sure we can sort you with whatever console you need. We shall begin with the first game, and this is the game of all Star Wars games, one of the very first which came onto the scene, which was on the PlayStation, and this is Jedi Power Battles. Now, with these games, graphics is not going to be what you expect.
from modern day games, but the gaming and the fun ratio outweighs all these modern day games. If you really want to immerse yourself in story and progress, uh, playing as a Jedi Knight and, and have a good time. You could play in co-op mode as well, then this is a great game if you wish to be Obi-Wan Kenobi, Mace Windu, Bloku, Qui-Gon Jinn, Adi Gala, and here are those Jedi Masters which you recognize from the film, you can play them in here, and it really is a great progressive game, you could continue to play and work up to the final duel on Naboo against Darth Maul, said Lord himself. So, I'm just pop these on so I can see. So, the next game is incredibly fun. This can be played in single player mode or multiplayer. Of course, you probably need someone to play with you, mind you. I wouldn't imagine anyone would want to be friends with you, not unless you had to pay them. But regardless, you could pay someone to do it. I would come and help you complete the game, should you pay me, of course. I see ourselves more as acquaintances as opposed to uh, anything close to a friendship. But this is a great game where you travel through ex two exotic locations and Star Wars worlds and race in your pod and the classic pod races from the boon to eve race and phantom menace make a, an appearance again Spolba and Ben Quaginero and all the favorites and then you work up to the boon to eve race circuit so it's a lot of fun if you enjoy that sort of bash out other Star Wars bots and want to be a violent racer then this is a great game for that. Though you prefer sort of newbie games where you don't do anything, probably camp. Do you know what a camper is? Apart from going outdoors and setting up a tent? Well in gaming terms it's someone like you doesn't really do much on the battlefield or contribute anything to the progression of whatever level you're playing, you instead decide to sit there and protect yourself and not get shot or whatever. We call that camping. A very noob sort of behavior. So the next one is Revenge of the Sith. Or PlayStation 2 again. Now this is a classic game which came out when the film came out and you basically follow how the film Revenge of the Sith played out and it's a great game especially if you want to force lightning some Jedi in the Jedi Temple as Anakin Skywalker and just have a fun time using the force and being a Jedi Knight and doing missions which Jedi would do. But what's also great about this game is that it includes all the characters something which Battlefront, the recent Battlefront should have done, which they haven't. Let's include all the characters, so General Grievous, Count Dooku, Darth Maul, they're all in here. If you wish to do a versus mode and battle it against someone, but of course you need friend to do that. But the campaign is great and very compelling, something which can't be made, especially if you follow the film, can't be made in recent days, and the multiplayer is great as well, the co-op mode. So that's Revenge of the Sith. Then we go for something which is more adventurous, Jedi Starfighter, and this is a great game if you wish to go on missions and fly out in space and around planets and just sort of be a pilot. And I know you had this aspect in Battlefront, but 
you don't have to pay any more to upgrade anything or just have a better experience. The experience is all in the game and there's no camping in this one, which I'm sure you're already planning or thinking about. And you can't camp as you would probably crash, you actively would have to play it. But you fly around as Addy Gunner. Jedi Knight and you great companions and you go on a great mission and basically this fills in the gap of what happens with Count Dooku and Jango Fett and what's going on so not only are these games great fun to play but they give you a good insight on what's actually going on but I suppose these games now fall into legends and no longer canon so next stop, which is also for PlayStation 2, and this is a great game if you consider yourself a bit of a psychopath, which I'm sure you probably are, however you wouldn't admit it. And what I mean by that, if you uh, want to go yeah, to Coruscant and uh, flamethrower someone, tie them up, poison darts, fire poison darts at them, or just generally uh, that sort of loutish behavior, and uh, just cause a nuisance of yourself, then that sort of free roaming element is in this game, which is great fun. Uh, you play as Django Fed, and you go on an adventure, which tells you more about the character, but the fun aspect is one of the good ones in Star Wars games and you really have some challenging missions but in the end once you get the technique uh, you do start to feel like a true bounty hunter so this might appeal to you if you want all those elements in a game I myself have had a great time playing this and sort of bridges the gap of questions you wanted to find out about about this sort of time period and how Django Fett started working for Count Dooku and the Clone Army but that's still a classic game should you wish to head down to the Bounty Hunter side of things so Galactic Battlegrounds this really is superb strategic game something you would probably uh, need to use your brain with and think about uh, and just plan your attack so if you consider yourself as someone who has a brain and uses it um, this might appeal to you but then again it probably will not as you do not strike me as one of those people but you can play throughout the whole era of Star Wars, you can create scenarios, custom scenarios, make your own battles, pretty much includes all the characters you know and love, but also extra ones as well. And it has a very compelling campaign mode as well. So it contains everything you wish to have in a game. And it's another one of those games which sort of stands out these days as games like this are very rare because they are fun so this is on PC so you can play this on your laptop or your computer but be sure that you play it using your brain otherwise it might sacrifice game 
So if you love Star Wars vehicles, then this is going to be great fun. And it is a campaign mode game, and you fly around, you basically work up to a Naboo Starfighter, you have different variants of it, and you help Naboo free it from the Trade Federation Army, which has taken over, and you do it um, bit by bit, and do it works up to the Phantom Menace, great battle across Naboo, and it really is great fun and very nostalgic. The favourite bit is at the end campaign, where you fly up to take out the droid battle station, and that really is a lot of fun. And something which they tried to capture in the recent Battlefront games, they almost have it, but missing out some crucial fun aspects, which I sort of expected to see from this game. So you may like it if you consider yourself a bit of a pilot and someone who enjoys vehicles and flying around but you can camp out in that one if that appeals to you and sticking with PC now there we have it this is the Star Wars games of all Star Wars games which kick started this sort of new age in how much fun you can have in actually playing a Star Wars game and its predecessor is currently being used at the moment or shall I say it's, its successor Battlefront 2 exceeds all expectations and becomes one of the best Star Wars games ever now this is where of course it all began or Battlefront 2, Battlefront 1 uh, doesn't come close with the original Battlefront so this really is a great game if you want to have a lot of fun and be transported back into that sort of old school playing this is a, one of the sort of golden pieces in my retro gaming shop the fact that this is an old game sort of feels retro because you actually have fun with it so this comes highly recommended and finally my favorite of all Star Wars games and this This is what I consider to be the only Star Wars game where you can have free reign with a lightsaber. And what I mean by that is that you can do absolutely anything you want with that lightsaber. So if you want to be a true Jedi Knight, defeat enemies and battle it out with bad guys, you can do so. If you wish to shoot people with a uh, range of blasters and guns that you have with you, you can do that too. But if you consider yourself to have a dark Sith element to you, the option is there to slash and hack and chop people up, should you wish. Of course, that's the sort of psychopath way to play games, but this is what this game was designed for to defeat enemies and just have an amazing time progressing through the story uh, which is captivating and nostalgic as you play it and you play a character called Kalkatan and you work your way up to be a Jedi Knight until you get your lightsaber at Luke's Jedi Academy now this is the game which should have been Star Wars Episode 7 this, once you play this game, will exceed all your expectations for a Star Wars movie and of course will make you feel extremely disappointed when you actually see what has happened in the recent Star Wars movies and what it could have been or what it could have been like. So 
that this game includes all that is very much recommended by me to you for ultimate funness and good times. Of course, it has a successor like the previous Battlefront, Jedi Knight, Jedi Academy, and you take on the role of Cole Katan's student, and you have choices should you turn to the dark side or remain light, and it's just as awesome as this, and when you download the cheats of this game after you've completed it, mind you, you must complete the game before you use the cheats, and then you can really start to download patches and upgrade it with modern day battles and do a lot of Fate Zero type stuff, and it becomes a lot of fun. And you could spawn whoever you want as characters, Darth Vader, before you get the patch. And you can play as pretty much anyone and have a great time. And you can have the best lightsaber combat that I've ever seen in a game still. And it still hasn't been matched. So that is Jedi Knight. Jedi Outcast for PC. This is a real treat and something which I'll be happy to give to you as well if you decide to exchange and purchase one of the games which I showed you now in my hand here is a collectible which has recently come out and if you are into stamps or want to collect something awesome, then I think you will really enjoy these Star Wars stamps. Now we just take that out and show you. It includes two sides of Star Wars stamps full of all the characters from the whole saga. And they really are a collector's piece, so I wouldn't really recommend you using them, uh, but as you can see, there's Han Solo, Luke Skywalker, Ben Kenobi, Darth Sidious from Revenge of the Sith, Darth Vader, Yoda, has all the classics and even more on the back here. Yeah. So I would like to um, include this on your package deal as well. Now I do seem to recall that I already have you on the system here. Yes, you have the interesting name, which I can't forget. Unfortunately, it is just not a very nice name. There we go. Yes, so exchange that and I'll put down that. So which was the Star Wars game which you wanted to exchange? Okay, well, a fine choice. So, I will get this delivered to you very shortly. So, one Jedi, Knight's Jedi, Outcast, and of course, the original Battlefront is the one you wish to purchase. So, I'll be happy to do that for you and to get them delivered today. Uh, what was the area you said you came from? Oh, disgusting. Really? What, and you came from there into here? Oh, I'm surprised they have electricity over there. In order for you to play your games still. Must be okay, I'd imagine. Okay, so there we go. And I've that in the system and said that you're qualified for your special gift as well. So should you wish to come back for any other Star Wars games, you know what I have in stock. I've talked through them with you so I hope that you remember so I don't have to talk to 
remember if I'm playing a game, do not interrupt me. Remember that, otherwise I will not let you back in here again. Yeah. 